So I've been wondering. The fetus has a different genetic code to its mother, because it's made up of DNA from the mum and dad. Normally the immune system is programmed to attack things that are foreign. These things are normally bacteria, viruses and foreign substances. So why doesn't a mother's immune cells try to attack the fetus? It's lucky for us that it doesn't, at least in most cases. We wouldn't be around if it did. So how can the baby be left, alone to survive when the bugs are wiped out by the immune system? The key lies at the surface where the mother and baby interact, at the placenta. At the interface, the mother cells show a tolerance of the fetal tissue despite the difference in the genetic codes of the two tissues. This tolerance comes from different processes that locally suppress the immune system of the mother and allow the fetus to avoid immune attack. One thing is the secretion of special proteins that reduce the activity of the mother's immune cells. Secondly, is the build-up of cells that regulate and control the immune system functions. Thirdly, there is a reduction in proteins that activate the mother's immune cells. While this immune decrease is most strong locally, there is some overall decrease in immunity in pregnant mums, and they can suffer from more severe infections and problems with dental hygiene. While this generally works well, there are some situations where the fetus can be attacked by the mother's immune system. This is due to variations in blood proteins between the mother and baby, which provoke the mother's immune cells to attack the baby's blood cells. This is called hemolytic disease of the newborn, and although it can lead to serious problems, it's usually avoided by screening blood types. So that's why as a baby you weren't killed by your mother's immune cells, even though she was kind of attacking you at the same time. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Share, like and subscribe for new Wonder Men's videos every week.